Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tears Studio and today I'm sharing with you some different mark making techniques and then a art journal page made with some of the pieces that I made with my mark making techniques. This was done on Art Joy of Sharing live stream show with Peg Robinson this morning and we're talking about our favorite art tools for mark making because this month in the Art Joy of Sharing art community Facebook group the theme is art tools and if you use hashtag AJOS2020 art tools and you search that in the search engine you'll find different videos and things from people in the group who have uh, contributed to that subject this month. So if you were to ask me my favorite art tools, uh, gel plate would be one of them. Stencils would be another. Posca pins would be a, uh, a very popular, in my opinion, mark making tool. So the first thing I was doing here is I was drawing with Posca pins, which is an acrylic marker on my six by six gel plate and then letting that dry. I just made some various marks across it. And then I used some black paint to pick up all that acrylic now, you know, Posca pins are opaque, so they will show up on this black background. I made kind of a smeary mess, <laughs> so I had to use a uh, paper towel to help me burnish. But as you can see, it makes very interesting paper by just making your own marks on some uh, a gel plate with some acrylic markers. So the next thing that I wanted to do, this is something that I think is fun with stencils. I saw Mary Beth Shaw do this the other day and her piece turned out so pretty and then she demonstrated it. First first there was something that came out that she had done with this technique and a stencil and then uh, she did it on her live stream. She's been doing live streams every Tuesday and Thursday uh, as you know something to give us some entertainment as we are still at home and quarantined. So you need a stencil that has some fairly wide uh, spaces in it and you gesso, you use black gesso and stencil over the stencil. Also another interesting thing that I like to do with stencils is what you saw there just briefly is to um, use the excess paint on a piece of deli paper and make kind of a grungy print with the stencil which is the reverse of it of course then. This is actually a mask technically. So I I used the sponge dauber, went over it with black gesso, and then now I'm using some watercolors and a lot of water and just letting the watercolors bleed together and smush around within the areas that are left from the stencil that aren't stenciled with the black gesso. Now if you use some other water soluble media or if maybe even if you use some watered down acrylic or something like that or acrylic ink you could stencil it a second time so you don't really have to worry about messing up the black then i just made a couple of watercolor blobs here um, another fun thing to do is to just make random watercolor blobs and then to doodle over the top see if they they make you think of something so that's another mark making thing that you can do so then I wanted to do some mark making on tissue paper with black ink and my uh, dip pen because it's usually really cool, but my black ink was completely gunked up. I guess it's just, it's dried out. From, I haven't used it very much, so it's kind of disappointing. And then I also I got out my white India ink and some craft colored deli paper and then some black and I'm using my dip pin. That's what I would have done with the black on the tissue. Um, and what you can do with these things is you just tear them up. You keep them in your collage bits and you tear them up and use them as interesting pieces in your collage. You just layer them on there with your mixed media collage. So I really love doing that. Now this is another product. It is a compressed sponge and it's just thin sheets of, of this material and you could die cut it with a steel rule die if you have steel rule dies. The thinlets don't work. Or you can uh, cut it with scissors. And then once you put it in water, it, it uncompresses and turns into a sponge. And these are great um, kind of textured mark making tools. 
I haven't got this stuff out probably in 20 years. And I got it out. I'm like, oh, this will be fun. I still have a whole pack of it. So I made uh, a few different pieces. And now I'm going to to make marks with them on some deli paper. This is the one that I was that I'd put the black ink on. And this botanical piece turned out pretty cool. I like it. I guess that's actually tissue paper. Never mind. It's not. It's not deli. It's tissue. Um, tissue paper is is nice to uh, collage with because it becomes pretty much trans completely transparent. Deli paper does too, but not maybe not as transparent. And I have some uh, tissue that was left from a packaging situation. <laughs> and um, well, that's what I was using. I just, I just spritz it with water and let it lay flat because you know it's all wrinkled up when you get it in a packaging situation. I also had these squiggly ones and um, this kind of uh, twisty one that I made with the extra strips and then that this one is the reverse didn't print very much but you'll see that one come in later the reverse of of what I cut out of the botanicals and I thought that would make an interesting mark too so then the next thing I wanted to try was uh, how would these spongy mark making tools work on a gel plate. So I rinsed them out and then dried them off as much as I could. They're still a little bit damp. And then I put some light rose acrylic paint down on my six by six plate. And then I'm using this, this one that's the reverse, the leftovers cut out from that other one that I cut out, you know, that one. <laughs> and I'm just using it, uh, stamping it down onto the plate and removing some paint. And I was going to pick all that up. And then I thought, you know, what would be really kind of cool is if I traced around it. So you'll see me tracing around it in a minute. Then I was using this heavy body paint and I was going to try to see what it would look like if I stamped directly onto the gel plate to make a pattern. And I discovered that the heavy body paint is not a good choice. So you'll see me using a different paint in a bit. I decided it would work better if I used a fluid paint and I ended up using my um, media fluid paints from DecoArt. So now I'm just using that black Posca pen and I, you know, I thought to myself, am I going to ruin my Posca pen? You need to make sure that that paint is dry. And then I kept scratching it off onto my scratch paper to make sure that there wasn't any clogging up the tip of the pen because you could ruin a pen that way really easy. <laughs> So then I just drew around it and then I put some fluorescent paint over the top to pick it up and it's a pretty cool print. It, it, um, it kind of reminds me of girly camouflage. Like sometimes you see a pink camouflage that um, girls might wear, especially the second one when I pick it up. Um, I think it's the second one or maybe it's the third. I don't know. <laughs> I decided to try some white and pick up the rest of it. Um, surprisingly, some of that black was coming off. I used a piece of black paper and then also a piece of white paper to remove it and get it pulled off there. And this one, this one on the black, it reminds me of girl camouflage. <laughs> so anyway, that was fun. Um, the next thing I decided to try again is the fluid paint. So. I've got some green gold, some cobalt teal, and some, uh, I can't remember what the other one is, the darker one is, but that really worked much, much better. So the fluid paint with the sponge works better when you're trying to print something down onto the plate instead of removing. It worked great to remove the, the heavier body, but then it worked better to, to print onto the plate. So I needed that to dry because the fluid paints, you know, it's more liquidy. It takes a little bit longer to dry, which is why I don't often use the fluid paint on the plate because I like something that dries quickly. And those student grade heavy body paints and also actually the Dean and Wakely heavy body paints work really great on the plate if you want to move quickly. So this month in Stencil Club, which is a club from Stencil Girl that you pay $25 a month and you get three exclusive stencils, a 9 by 12 a 6 by 6 and a 4 by 4 every month. And it just so happened that this month, the set that we got 
is called mark making. <laughs> and so I figured I better get it out of its envelope and make some marks with it. So I decided I wanted to use some tissue paper again, or maybe this is deli paper, I can't remember which. And I've got some heavy body paint in uh, night. Now, a fun thing to do, you know, maybe, maybe you are working on your collage or your mixed media and you don't want to have to always get out the stencil. Well, you can make marks with the stencil on some thin paper and just keep it in your collage parts and then you can use it later. And so that is what I'm doing here is these are just like little scraps of thin paper that I'm just using that night colored paint to make marks and then I can use them later. So now it's time to pick up this print. I used some uh, buff colored paint and it a little bit of it of the paint wasn't quite dry so it came up a little bit but not bad and I just think this is a cool print I would I would wear that as a as a shirt <laughs> you know wouldn't that be an interesting fabric for like a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> it'd be kind of fun so I decided at this point in the show that it would be time to actually make something with all of these so I picked the ones that I thought would work together and I have my um, tab journal that I made a while ago with the envelopes that the stencils come in, <laughs> the heavy uh, cardboard envelopes. I made this tab journal. Uh, you will be able to see it as a video. Um, I'll try to remember to put it in the iCard or in screen so you can see. If you haven't seen me make this journal, if you can watch that. Um, so I, I'm starting out with this paper that's got the different colors of teal and green on it and I found a page that had similar colors that's tissue paper that's been uh, put on with gesso on the backs of these pages just to give them a little bit of color and these tissues had kind of the same colors as these things that I had made with my mark making today so I'm using that print I don't like that pink <laughs> I uh, need to cover up that pink down at the bottom. That's the tape, that the tab tape, the washi tape that's holding it together. So I decided to get out some of the craft deli paper that has the white mark making on it with the India ink and put some pieces of that on. And um, I'm using, to start out with, I was using my matte gel medium to put everything down. I think when I, at the end, I ended up switching to fluid medium. Uh, matte medium because um, I had such thin tissue paper that the the thicker mediums don't really work well. Usually I would pull out my uh, napkin decoupage from DecoArt because it works really well for thin, thin paper like tissue paper. But I'm still in the deli paper. I'm still using the gel medium. I put a little bit of gesso over those pink uh, washi tapes down at the bottom because I really didn't want that pink to show through. This page definitely is all cool colors and the pink would just stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> it was like, ah, there's pink. That's not right. So I kind of camouflaged that with some more of this craft colored deli paper with the mark making from the white India ink. And then trimming off the edges a little bit, making sure everything's stuck down. Then I decided I wanted to use some of the the black India ink piece because I thought that that would be nice contrast and this is on deli paper and ugh look what happens <laughs> it's smeared all over the place and I spent the rest of the time trying to fix that um, I ended up covering it up pretty much uh, yeah it wasn't dry it wasn't dry I didn't know it seemed dry but that India ink in that bottle is kind of just messed up. And I don't know, maybe it never does dry at that point. So I tried to clean it up. I let it sit there for a while, hoping it would dry and get sealed in by the matte medium. And I moved on to uh, some of this tissue paper that had the mark making stencil on it. And that's my favorite of the mark making stencils. Well, I haven't tried a couple of other ones, but I just love that um, kind of boxy, U, U shape. I don't know. It's cool. Designed by Kat Kerr. She's a designer for club this this month. And 
Um, when you're in the club, you get to see videos that she made specifically using the stencils that she designed. So every month that the person who designed the stencils, the artist who designed the stencils in, for the club makes a video and you can watch it and find out what they thought about when they were making these particular stencils. So then I put some white gesso on there trying to clean it up a little bit. Still didn't like the way it looked. Not happy, not happy. <laughs> so I ended up putting the, the last piece that I had of that little print um, over some of it and then I added some other stuff. Um, these kind of twisted looking prints that I made with the one sponge. I They're the right color so I put those on down at the bottom there to cover up some of that black smeariness that I made. Sometimes this is how art journaling goes. <laughs> but then it still wanted to smear so I decided fine I'm just going to use some of that smeariness as part of the design. Since this is an abstract type of a look anyway, I'll just let it smear out with my brush and add it to the design. Sometimes that's all you can do. So then I still have this tissue paper with some of these little botanical looking situations and I decided to put some of those on the right facing page. Um, they blend right in. They look basically like they've been stamped right onto it which they could have been, but it's just fun to make a bunch of mark making stuff in advance and have it ready when you want to collage. You don't have to get anything out. You don't have to get any paint out. You can just collage some things on there. And that's that's the most fun. Now, this these little circles that I'm cutting out are from the paper that I was using as a palette. I couldn't find my actual palette paper um, for messing with those sponge tools. And so I just used a piece of scrap paper and it had a lot of pretty green, gold and teal and turquoise type colors on it, which matched the page. So I just cut out some little circles and I'm sticking those down with my Yoohoo glue stick because I just don't feel like smearing more of that black by putting more, <laughs> more stuff on there. Still not sure if that black is going to smear some more. So I just put the dots around here and there. Um, they, they just add interest. And then I got out a China marker, which is kind of like a waxy crayon, and made some marks with that and kind of emphasized where I had used the smeared India ink because that makes it look like it's intentional, you know. I really did mean to make those black smeary marks. But there's still some up at the top I don't like, so I'm going to try to cover those up. This is one of my watercolor um squiggle blot things and I just cut it out. It's a thicker paper and I stuck it down using some Yoohoo glue stick. And then I had one more of these twisty design looking print thingies and I decided to add that somewhere um, and add another of these leafy things up at the top because there was a little bit of a balance issue going on there. Things were too bottom heavy. So I got out some more of the fluid matte medium and put those on. And it's okay if you're layering one thing on top of another. It's okay if things, you know, get on top of each other and some things get obscured by other things. It's all good. It's good stuff. Then I decided I needed a few more of these little um, C shapes, U shapes, whatever they are here and there because there was a big piece of it at the bottom and there was nothing at the top to balance it because I covered up all the black stuff that I had originally put that onto, you know, you know, <laughs> composition, balance, all that stuff. You just kind of have to, to go with it. So I used some more of that uh, under paper or the palette paper to cut out the word love because that's what we all need, right? Love especially now. We miss our people. We miss our life. We miss going out. And so by us staying in, we're protecting other people and that's love. And yeah, so I thought that was a good word to use. And then I took a black Posca pen and started to do some mark making, mark making doodling -y type stuff. I went over that little area up there that was blank and I drew a flower 
and then I started tracing around some of the other um, elements, of course, because that's how you can make something stand out from the background and become the focal image if you trace around it. So that's always a good thing to do. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And uh, of course, I'm very appreciative if you um, leave me a comment and if you share and pin and all those type of things to help my channel grow by helping other people find me. Um, yeah, that's what I enjoy is when my channel grows. It just makes me happy. <laughs> so I'm continuing to use my black Posca pin uh, here and there to make... Uh, draw around things, make some marks, do some different stuff, make some some viney things inside of things. And I used a memento black ink pad to create a little bit of a border around the page by just rubbing it along the edge. And then I got out my white India ink, which has a, um, a dropper inside. And I used that dropper to just kind of make some marks here and there. Uh, highlight some stuff, add some, so a little bit of extra something something <laughs> with some white. Then I think the last thing I did was to splatter some black splatter. Oh no, I, I colored in the leaves that I had drawn on the flower with some watered down um, fluid acrylic. And then I made some black splatter with my Posca pin and that was it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.